I'm uh, Patrick Finn. I'm the Assistant Deputy Minister for Material here at uh, National Defence Headquarters. Uh, I've spent almost uh, 37 years here at National Defence, a little bit more than three and a half decades in uniform, where I did all kinds of work in acquiring and supporting equipment. Uh, I was an engineer in the Navy, I sailed in ships, submarines, so about a third of my career at sea. And, and so it gave me a really good sense of both what life in uniform is and what it's like to be deployed and having to use equipment. Now I find myself responsible for all of the acquisition and maintenance and support of all the equipment uh, that the Canadian Armed Forces use. And that's from clothing to combat boots to rations to uh, small arms through to armored vehicles, ships, uh, aircraft. We do it all. We make sure that the Canadian Armed Forces are technically ready to go out and do their missions. ADM MAT uh, is a very large program. We move about uh, six billion dollars a year, uh, about over 10,000 contracts that we work on. There's a lot of complexity to what we do. And we're in this morning in one of our organizations called the, called the Quality Engineering Test Establishment. And they do all kinds of really incredible work. In, in, in kind of dealing with issues that arise, but also detailed testing. And we're, I'm sitting this morning in an anechoic chamber, which when all sealed up, it actually keeps all of the radio frequency signals outside. So from, from cell phones to you name it, you know, a real kind of radio frequency soup that exists all over the place. And it makes it very hard to uh, actually isolate and test equipment without using a chamber of this nature. Um, Canadian Forces equipment and what the Canadian Forces do is really exceptional. You know, it's the, you hear the cliche of kind of firefighters when everybody's running away from a fire, you know, the firefighters are running forward. For the Canadian military, it's the same thing. What we ask the men and women of the military to do is really exceptional day in, day out. And so for us, making sure that we get the right equipment in a timely fashion such that the military is effective is extremely important. And we do so in providing equipment that is safe and secure that can actually do the role it's meant to do. So what lays ahead is you know, some more procurements, some very large ones, uh, a pretty substantial amount of shipbuilding now underway, continuing to recapitalize you know, the Air Force and the Army, so a number of uh, airlift projects underway, new helicopters, new maritime helicopters, uh, light armored vehicles being delivered for the, uh, for the Army. So there will continue to be a lot of work to do in those new acquisitions, but also in then making sure that we're well set up to make sure that we can maintain all of that in service as well. The challenges of uh, defense procurement is it's highly complex, very, very complicated equipment. Um, it, would be, it would be hard to describe uh, a piece of equipment more complicated than a, a combat warship or a fighter aircraft in the amount of things that it needs to do. And you're buying them in relatively small numbers. You're, you're buying them to go into harm's way. You're buying them so if there's something, they, they sustain damage for whatever reason, they need to continue to operate. Uh, it's a lot of taxpayers' money, so making sure that we're getting value for money is extremely important. And it's not well understood. So it's always a challenge for national defense and for defense procurement in going forward and making sure people understand how hard people in the material group work. We have about 4,000 really incredible professionals who work tirelessly day in, day out to make sure that the Canadian Armed Forces does get that equipment that it needs to be actually operationally ready. We are also um, what, I, what I tend to call the Department of Transport for all of the uh, Canadian Forces equipment. So whereas the Department of Transport would certify you know, ships and aircraft for use in Canada, we do that for all the military equipment and we do it for submarines, we do it for diving equipment, for aircraft, we do it for ammunition and explosive. And so a real success in that we have a program that continues to evolve and improve, but nevertheless uh, works very hard to make sure that the people at Canadian Forces are safe, as I've mentioned a couple of times. Um, you know, recently in support of uh, Opsorona, the, you know, the mission uh, to deal with the Ebola virus in Africa, you know, had to rapidly occur, procure some equipment in support of the people deploying there. You know, you see it on TV, l looks simple, looks like they're in a white disposable suit and masks, but really their lives are on the line. And the equipment that we procure, making sure it's the right equipment that can actually protect them, it's a life and death situation for the people deploying there. You know, and that's something 
that the Canadian forces, the people who serve in our military, they see and they experience all the time. Mm -hmm. Our job to make sure that we get that right, something as simple as uh, what would appear to be a white paper suit, it is a life and death decision. At the end of the day, national defence is about the defence of Canada, uh, it, its, its values at home and abroad. Um, being able to supply and maintain all that equipment uh, is really what allows the Canadian Forces to do what it needs to do.